In this final stage of work, results are achieved through the Word. Through the Word, man comes to understand many mysteries and God's work throughout generations past. Through the Word, man is enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Through the Word, man comes to understand the mysteries never before unraveled by generations past, as well as the work of prophets and apostles of times past, and the principles by which they work. Through the Word, man also comes to know the disposition of God Himself, as well as the rebelliousness and resistance of man, and comes to know their own substance. Through these steps of work and all words spoken, man comes to know the work of the Spirit, the work of God's incarnate flesh, and moreover, his entire disposition. Your knowledge of God's management work over 6,000 years was also gained through the Word. Was not your knowledge of your former notions and success in putting them aside, also attained through the Word? In the previous stage, Jesus worked signs and wonders, but it is not so in this stage. Was not your understanding of why He does not do so also achieved through the Word? Therefore, the words spoken in this stage surpass the work done by the apostles and prophets of generations past. Even the prophecies made by the prophets could not have achieved such results. The prophets spoke only of prophecies, of what would happen in the future, but not of the work God was to do at the time. They did not speak to lead man in their lives, to bestow truths upon man, or to reveal to man mysteries, and much less did they speak to bestow life. Of the words spoken in this stage, there is prophecy and truth, but mainly they serve to bestow life upon man. The words at present are unlike prophecies of the prophets, this is a stage of work not for prophecies, but for the life of man, to change the life disposition of man. The first stage was the work of Jehovah to pave a path for man to worship God on earth. It was the work of commencement to find the source of work on earth. At that time, Jehovah taught the Israelites to observe the Sabbath, respect their parents, and live peaceably with others. Since men of that time did not understand what constituted man, nor did they understand how to live on earth, it was necessary for him in the first stage of work to lead men in their lives. All that Jehovah spoke to them had not previously been known to mankind or been in their possession. At that time, many prophets were raised up to speak of prophecies, all made under the leadership of Jehovah. This was simply a part of the work. In the first stage, God did not become flesh, so He spoke to all tribes and nations through the prophets. When Jesus did His work at that time, he did not speak as much as in the present day. This work of the Word in the last days has never been done in ages and generations past. Though Isaiah, Daniel, and John made many prophecies, such prophecies were entirely different from the words spoken now. What they spoke of were only prophecies, but the words now are not. If I turned all I speak of now into prophecies, would you be able to understand? If I spoke of matters for the future, 
matters after I have gone. How could you gain understanding? The work of the Word was never done in the time of Jesus or the age of law. Perhaps some may say, Did not Jehovah speak words as well in the time of His work? In addition to healing sickness, casting out demons, and working signs and wonders, did not Jesus also speak words at that time? There are differences in how words are spoken. What was the substance of the words uttered by Jehovah? He was only leading man in their lives on earth, which was not involved with spiritual matters in life. Why is it said that the words of Jehovah were proclaimed unto all places? The word proclaimed refers to giving clear explanations and direct instruction. He did not supply man with life. Rather, he simply took man by the hand and taught man how to revere him. There were no parables. The work of Jehovah in Israel was not to deal with or discipline man or to deliver judgment and chastisement. It was to lead. Jehovah asked Moses to tell his people to gather manna in the wilderness. Every morning before sunrise, they were to gather manna, only enough to be eaten that day. The manna could not be kept until the next day, as it would then become moldy. He did not teach man or reveal their natures, and he did not reveal their ideas and thoughts. He did not change man, but led them in their lives. In that time, man was like a child. Man understood nothing and could only make basic mechanical movements. Therefore, Jehovah only decreed laws to lead the people. Just do.
Good night.